In this lesson, we're going to take a look at completing the square. We will be using algebra tiles in order to conceptually understand what's going on. If you haven't seen a video on how to multiply using algebra tiles first, you might choose to look for that. When we're using the algebra tiles, we're going to be using them to understand what completing the square actually physically looks like, so that way we can conceptually understand. We'll look at the steps listed out. We'll be able to solve quadratic equations using completing the square. And then we'll also be able to look at quadratic equations where the leading coefficient is not 1. In this problem, we have at the bottom x squared plus 6x's. The x squared is a blue square. The 6x's are um, the six green rectangles that you see. And the question is, how can we position them using as many of the red ones in order to create a perfect square? We're going to place the blue square in the top left corner of the grid. And then what we're going to be able to do is place our six x's and again, our goal is to create a square. As we begin placing these six x's across the top, what you'll notice is it's getting very long and it's going to become extremely difficult to uh, create an actual square out of them. So instead of continuing with six x's across the top, we're going to fill in three x's across the top and choose to put three x's horizontally coming in from the left side. When we do this, we notice that it is much more of a square shape. And now what our task is, is to figure out how many of the red ones it would take in order to create an actual square. As we start moving them across, we'll notice that we can put three of them in a row across. In the next row down, we can put three more and quickly we realize that we can actually go through and fill in the missing part of this square. We're completing the square by putting in nine of these red ones. So in the end, what we have across the top is we have a length of x, the blue length of the blue the length of the blue square is x. And we have a length of 3. The short side of the rectangles is 1. And we have x plus 3 across the top, x plus 3 down the side, and that gives us a perfect square. It is made up of the pieces of an x squared, which was blue, six x's, which were green. And then what we did was we filled in nine of the little ones. So x squared plus 6x plus 9 is what we started with, and we broke it apart into a square, and the area of that square of length times width, which would be x plus 3 times x plus 3, or x plus 3 squared. If you took x plus 3 and squared it, or distributed it out, you would end up with the x squared plus the 6x plus 9. So what we've done is we've taken our pieces and created a perfect square out of them. What you'll notice that we did was we arranged the x's so that half of them are vertical hanging down from the top and the other half are horizontal coming in from the side. This creates a square that can be filled with ones. The length of the side of square filled with ones is half the number of x's that are available. The total number of ones that are used are the square of half the number of x's. And then we observe that the total square has a length of x plus half the original number of x's. So this is our mindset as we go through and we try to understand how to complete the square. So again, we're going to do a physical model using algebra tiles to complete the square. And the problem is x squared plus 10x plus something else. So we're going to place our blue x squared in the top left. The 10x's that we have, we learned last time that we would like to pull off half of them and use them on the top in vertical strips. The other 5x's will pull in 
from the side horizontally. And now the goal is, is how do we take the x squared plus the 10 x's and fill it with the red ones in order to create an actual square out of this shape. And so you can see that we can put five across the first row and we would have several rows across. And as we start filling in the shape, it becomes pretty apparent that we would actually need 25 of these ones. And so in our expression, what we did was we actually added 25 ones. So we now have x squared plus 10x plus 25. The length across the top of this square would be x plus 5. Notice that that is simply half of the number of x's that we started with. And the length down the side would also be x plus 5. So we had a representation, an expression of x squared plus 10x plus 25, which factors into x plus 5 times x plus 5, or x plus 5 squared. So again, the key step in this is to take half of the x's and put them on top, and the other half of the x's and put them on the side. We'll take a look at a problem of how to solve by completing the square. We have x squared plus 12x minus 45 equals 0. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually move the constant c term over to the other side of the equal sign. So we'll have x squared plus 12x equals 45, and we did that by moving c over. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to remember back to the x's that we had. And if you think about having 12x's, what we physically did was we separated them into two groups. So what we did was we took half of those and we put them on top and half of them on the left side. And in doing so, we would create a space for ones to occur. And that would be a space of a square, which was six ones by six ones or six squared. We do have to add that amount to both sides. So we add 36 also to the right-hand side. And we get that by taking half of the number of B and squaring it and adding it to both sides. When we look at the expressions, on the left-hand side, we're actually going to be able to factor that. On the right-hand side, we'll just simplify it. And so the plus 6 squared actually came from the number of ones, the red ones that we needed to fill the space. And when we factor it, if you remember back, what we did was we took the number of x's and cut them in half. And so the length across the top would be x plus 6, because we took half of the b. The length down the side is also x plus 6, so we get x plus 6 squared. And if you factored x squared plus 12x plus 36, that's what you would get. On the right-hand side, we'll simplify that to be 81. At this step, we have actually finished completing the square. This problem actually asks us to solve by completing the square, so we'll go further than that. But the completing the square is actually finished at this step. What we did to finish it was we factored the left-hand side as x with half of b squared. In order to solve this equation, we're simply going to solve by undoing the square or taking the square root on both sides. Don't forget that when we do this, we do have to put plus or minus. So we end up with x plus 6 equals plus or minus 9. And then the last step that we need to do here is subtract 6 across. So we end up with x equals negative 6 plus or minus 9, which means one time we'll take the plus route, and one time we'll take the minus route. So negative 6 plus 9 is 3, and negative 6 minus 9 is negative 15. And so those are our two answers. We could have actually found these answers several different ways. We could have factored the original problem. We could have used the quadratic formula on the original problem. We could have graphed the original problem and looked for x-intercepts, 
or in this case what we actually did was we solved it by completing the square. Let's take a look at a little bit uh, more difficult of a problem. We have 2x squared plus 16x plus something and again we're going to try to figure out what we need there. Since we have 2x squared we're going to create two different groups. So we're going to actually split our problem into two groups. So we're going to create two of these grids and we'll put an x squared in one of the grids and an x squared in the other grid. If you take a look at the 16 x's that we have, what we're going to do is we're going to split those evenly among the two groups, which means we'll have 8x in each group. And for the 8x's that we have in the left group, we'll need four of those x's across the top. We'll also come in and place four of the x's down the left side. And we'll do the exact same thing in the other group. So the eight x's that we're placing in the group on the right will have the four x's across the top and the four x's down the left side. So notice that both of these groups will look exactly the same. We still have our two x squareds and our 16 x's. They're just split into two different groups. The question now becomes, how many red ones are we going to need? And whenever we start taking a look at these, we'll see that we can put in red ones across the top. There'd be a total of four across the top, and we'd have four rows of those. So we would have 16 in the grid on the left and 16 in the grid on the right. The square, the giant square that gets formed, would be x plus 4 across the top and x plus 4 down the side. And that gives us an area of the group on the left of x plus 4 quantity squared. On the right, we would have the exact same expression of x plus 4 quantity squared. And if we take a look at this, that means that we would have two groups of x plus 4 quantity squared. So that's actually what it ends up factoring into. The question still remains how many red ones did we produce? And so you can see that we actually ended up with not one group of 16 but two groups of 16 or 32 total red ones. So this problem is a little bit different in that we separate our groups into two different groups. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill out our steps here as we solve this equation by completing the square. 2x squared plus 16x plus 30. The first step we'll do is we will subtract the 30 over. We're still moving c over to the right hand side. That's still our first step. The next thing that we notice is we have a coefficient of x squared which is not 1. Whatever that coefficient is, we need to factor it out, so we'll pull the 2 out. And we end up with x squared plus 8x inside there. And now I'm ready to look at the 8 and take half of it. And we'll square that amount and add it to both sides, but we need to be very careful about adding it to both sides. It looks like I added just 4 squared. But if we distribute the 2 back through, we'll notice not only do we have a 16 there, we would actually have 2 times 16 there. So when we carefully add it to both sides, we recognize that we need to add 32 to the right-hand side in order to keep this balanced. That's the trickiest part of it whenever the leading coefficient is not 1. So whenever we go through, we have a 2, a coefficient of 2 that we hang on to. We're going to take x, half of the b, which is 4, squared. And then on the right-hand side, we simply uh, simplify this to be a 2. We've completed the square at that step, and as we go through and finish solving for x, we'll divide by 2. We've isolated x plus 4 squared, so we'll take the square root of both sides. 
don't forget that as you do that, you need to take uh, plus or minus. And then whenever we solve for x, we subtract 4. And so we end up with negative 4 plus or minus 1, which gives us answers of x equals negative 5 and x equals negative 3. So these are the two solutions that make it true. Just kind of as a setup step, what we did was we moved C over. We factor A out. We'll take half of B and we'll square it. We'll carefully add it to both sides. So that carefully is you might have to distribute that A back through in order to know how much you really, how many ones you really added. It'll always factor as x with half of the b squared. That's actually the step of the completing the square. If the problem asks for you to solve by completing the square, then what you need to do is you need to isolate the squared and then solve by taking the square roots, making sure that you remember to put in plus or minus.